But the comedic axe chicken, I can't believe I just put those words together, tells Uber about Kaylee's escape. You report. Well, the plot makes no sense, we have no originality, and the songs are going to be more successful than the actual movie. You wretched mythological moron! Who knows where Excalibur is? Oh, by the way, did I mention that the chicken is played by Jaleel White? Doesn't that make him just so much more likable? But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's no good. So just when you think the beaker of annoyance can't possibly be filled anymore, guess what else they toss our way? A double dragon. I wish. No, this is a funny two-headed dragon voiced by Eric Idle and Don Rickles. Together at last! Camelot? The restaurants? The theaters? The waitresses? The actresses? Are they funny? No. But they do love to sing obnoxious songs that just pop the out of nowhere. I'd be rocking with the dino. Swinging with the rhino. I'd be dragon eyes as cave. Oh, hey! This is like that thing Robin Williams did in Aladdin with the comedic references to modern day elements that won't exist for hundreds of years, except when he did it, it was mildly annoying, and when you do it, it's torturously annoying. Yeah, where does Elvis fit into the Arthur legend exactly, huh? You never sung before, have you? You don't need him, honey. So, what, we're just gonna move forward like nothing happened? Those two dragons just sung a three-minute song and you're not even going to acknowledge it? These songs have no purpose! They're like drive-by musicals! If you want him singing, fine, but make sure they have a point! Or are, you know, entertaining! How about holding your breath? So Rubar, oh, I'm sorry, Ruber, catches up with our heroes and attacks them. Get down! But they all escape as Kaylee gets Garrett somewhere safe to mend his wounds. I'm sorry. I'll get the sky. Oh, shut up! Does everybody have to sing in this movie? Look at him. It actually looks like it's hurting as he sings. Why would you sing if you're in pain? Are you afraid a talent scout's gonna drop by on your deathbed? I hear your heartbeat just go for love. And suddenly I know why love Wait, wait, no, no, you can't get away with that movie, you need some explanation. How can a leaf evaporate into his skin and just magically cure it? No, no, that does not happen, movie, that just does not happen. Unless you, oh, I don't know, explain! So after the healing touch of leaves, they make it to the cave where Excalibur is. And it turns out it's being held by... a rock fighter. A rock fighter? A rock fighter. For <laughs> sakes, you're not even trying. First your ripoff fell, and now you got rip off the rock fighter from NeverEnding Story. This is just painful. Rock fighter, what were you thinking? It looked like a good, strong script, didn't it? The bad guys enter as well, but luckily our heroes get Excalibur before they can touch it. The ogre's butt. Did he just say the ogre's butt? The ogre's butt. Okay, that's not a sentence, that's a noun. That's not even a good noun. In fact, this is where Gary Oldman should have known this movie was going to suck. When he had to just say the line, the ogre's butt. Gentlemen, I, I want to talk to you about this line. Which is that? The ogre's butt. What about it? Is... is that it? It's simply the ogre's butt? Yeah, it's an ogre's butt. What's wrong with an ogre's butt? Oh, nothing. I have nothing against the ogre's butt. I'm sure the ogre's butt is lovely. However, there doesn't seem to be any reason for the ogre's butt. How about perhaps a uh, verb or predicate clause, like... Look out for the ogre's butt, or, oh no, we are under the ogre's butt, or, if you'll permit me, woe is me and all others who are trapped under ogre's butt. This is, this is. Yeah, ogre's butt is in plural. Duly noted. But at least that one came with a conjunction. Grammatically speaking, I think that makes the ogre's butt much more palatable. Look, just stick to the script. But I ask you, how does it make any sense? I'm a Shakespearean trained actor. Hey, weren't you that spider in Lost in Space? Focus butt it is. Get the work, puppet. Uh. So our heroes get out and finally make it home. Camelot. It's only a model. Oh, Gary. 
But just as they're about to hand in the sword together... You deliver it. I... I don't belong in that world. What do you mean you don't belong? You're incredible! You see better than how most people can see! In fact, are you even blind? Come on, Aiden. Like every tree... No! This makes no sense! You don't belong in a world with cozy houses, comfy beds, and guaranteed security, but you do belong in a world of killer plants, giant monsters, and dragons that can f***ing eat you. Hello, you're not hard of hearing, just listen to a good opportunity and take advantage of it! You... moron! Well, of course, the bad guys catch up with Kaylee and steal the sword away from her. Ruber takes the potion out of his cleavage and forges Excalibur onto his arm. Thus, Kaylee is kidnapped and uses leverage for her mother to get the villains into Camelot. Oh, and in answer to your question earlier, honey, about what a damsel in distress is, it's a stupid female who knows how to take care of herself, but yet constantly has to be rescued. In other words, yo! It's Lady Juliana! Lower the bridge at once! Also, let in the dark shadowy figure with the black hood, black horse, and black saddle. I'm sure he can be totally trusted. So Kaylee escapes, Ruber attacks, and Garrett changes his mind and comes back to help. Well, you've got to ask yourself, do I feel clucky? Well, do ya, punk? Sorry, I'm going for two! They corner Ruber at the stone that Excalibur was pulled out of and trick him into slipping it back in. This causes some magical bullshit that blows him up and, get this, magically heals everybody. Why? How? I refer you to my first nuclear explosion. That's right, everyone is totally and permanently healed, except for the blind guy. Hey, what the f***? Get the f*** in his eyes, you f***! What, was saving everything that could possibly be saved in this movie just not enough for you? Excalibur's a bunghole! So Kaylee and Garrett are finally made knights. All the people rejoice and celebrate by inventing Riverdance. Well done, Aiden. <laughs> I did absolutely nothing. I was a complete waste of animation. On second thoughts, let's not go to Camelot. It is a silly place. Right. Right. Yeah, I think Arthur summed it up there. Quest for Camelot. A medieval times restaurant has more dignity than this piece of <laughs> The characters are rip-offs, the story has no connection to the Arthur legend, and, oh yeah, there's a bajillion things that are never explained. In fact, I want an answer. I want an answer right now. And not only do I want an answer, I want answered as the most innocent, perfect being that I can think of, Mary Poppins. That's right. Mary Poppins is going to be my representation of this movie. So tell me, Mary Poppins, how do you explain this bull that we just witnessed? First of all, I would like to make one thing quite clear. Huh? I never explain anything.
understand. No!